All right, everything is set and everything is good. Hey, what's happening, everyone? I am the Dragon God of Gaming, Damien Dragon, and welcome back to the Gaming News, where we run down the list of all the most beautiful and wonderful rumors and news coming out of this week, and I show it to you for your viewing pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, I have some really cool things. I have some photos. I also have some news on the PlayStation 5. I also have something for Cyberpunk 2077. Some things from Ubisoft and a hacker who played games at an airport. Um, that may sound strange, but I will I, I will elaborate. First off, let's head into what we normally have been lately. The PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys don't know anything about all this yet, please, I implore you to go back through the gaming news and just look at all the things I've said about it, because believe me, it's a gorgeous thing. It's a very gorgeous thing. But before I start on the, you know, the actual thing, I do want to show you the thing. Um, there was a thing that people leaked images of what could possibly be the consumer version of of what the PlayStation 5 could look like. And obviously there was a leaked version of somebody who made a concept of it. I also had that one, but I just refused to not show it because it was claimed to be a concept and it's only a concept. And that was from the person who made the concept of it. And I I can respect that, I can I can understand that, but it's not what I'm looking for. I, I'm, I wanna bring you guys the news of what it could possibly be. And that's this is what we're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen. This could be what we're looking at as a consumer version of the PlayStation Five. This was leaked uh, about a month and a half ago. No, give me one moment because I I saved it. As anticipated, hot's up for the launch of the Sony's PlayStation Next Gen console later in 2020. We're gathering together all the best PlayStation 5 information that we know already, which is actually a lot, as well as the freshest leaks, rumors, news, and gossip. But for everything that's being said, an anonymous leaker has revealed what they claim are official details about Sony's PlayStation 5. The clash of information was posted to a notorious online web forum and suggests the PlayStation 5 release date is just days away. And this is the actual thing I got. Sony has already confirmed that the PlayStation 5 is coming out this year, but its exact design, release date, and price still remain a mystery despite the imminent launch. Now an anonymous 4chan user has claimed to have insider knowledge about the console. The leaker says the console will be unveiled on February 5th, 2020, which is consequently next month. Well, it will be revealed. It will be unveiled. It wouldn't. It's not going to be out for service until about December. But an anonymous 4chan user says that it will be unveiled about February 5th, 2020. It will cost about £449, pounds, $449, 649 yen, well, 54,999 yen, and 449 krone, I believe that is. I'm not very sure. I'm not, I'm not used to those numbers. <laughs> it's claimed that the launch event will take place at the Ritzy Sony Hall, a Sony-sponsored venue in New York City. According to the Sony event, a Hall event calendar, no public or private bookings are scheduled for February 5th. That means the venue appears to be free for a Sony event, if one were being planned in secret. Marketing buzz phrases for the console are listed as little to no load times, blazing fast, well, blazing fast downloads and download the game or stream the games as an option. Of particular excitement to the Sony fans and the rumored support for something I'm actually about to start. But ladies and gentlemen, it seems like we may have an unveiling on next month. As I called it uh, last week when I went over the PlayStation 5 specs and capabilities, I did say that most likely within the coming months we may get an unveiling and true to form this month we I there's a leak that says February 5th we may just see the Sony we just may see the Sony PlayStation 5 unveiled between um, before our very eyes and this could be what we're looking at. So this is actually a beautiful 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 thing. But I do want to focus on one other thing before I talk more on that, which is 
A leak did say that backwards compatibility will be one of the main selling points for the upcoming PlayStation 5 console. So right now I'm, I'm reading off for the, for the backwards compatibility for the console. Now it says something that Sony addressed a few times in the past year without unveiling any specifics. Being able to play the titles gamers already own would make it a lot easier to upgrade from the PlayStation 4 to the PlayStation 5, which it would. Because it's a really good thing that you don't need to shell out hundreds of dollars yet just to play new, newer titles at the moment. Uh, you can stick with what you have at the moment and, you know, work your way up to the console because you don't need to buy a whole new stack of games specifically to, put, to get the system to fucking function. And yes, that's my one per video, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my videos are labeled as not... Uh, not for suitable for kids, so I do not I, I do not condone any of that. E everyone else does on the channel. I do not, for specific reasons because I slip up like that. Anyway, <laughs> um, and Sony already confirmed it's planning to make the transition as seamless as fast as possible, which it did. A recent leak that included a supposed release date, pricing details, and as well as a date for the PlayStation 5 launch event also contains some interesting information about the PS5's backward compatibility features, which I cannot wait to try out. Getting to play, mm, getting to play all these games, and believe me, these are some of the stuff I, I, I want to talk about. As it turns out, Sony's backward compatibility features might end up being even better than we thought. The, the launch leaker said on 4chan a few days ago that Backward compatibility will be a big PS5 feature. And this is a quote specifically from the Fortune user. Backwards compatibility with all PS4 games is also a big feature. Though a new trans transferring features, users will easily transfer their PS4 games to the PlayStation 5. And those games are downloaded. Which some of mine are downloaded. So I'm actually very happy about that. PS mm, to the PS5, those games are downloaded. Save data backups for PS4 games will be all also be transferable. Meaning that I can actually play any of the, my games on that as well. So that's very sexy. In a second comment, he said the feature is even more impressive than that. Allowing PS5 owners to load a lot more games than just PS4 releases. And he said it one more time. Backwards compatibility is such a major feature that games from all five PlayStation platforms. PS1, PS2, PSP, PS3, and PS4 will be compatible with PS5, making it an ultimate PlayStation console. Putting an emphasis on past and present gaming, more details about backwards compatibility will be discussed at a later date. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that it just breaks it down right there. The PlayStation 5 will be ultimately backwards compatible. Mm, backwards compatible. I can't wait, but we. this is just a leak. This may just be a rumor and nothing is set in stone. We were told that I was backwards compatible with the PlayStation 4 games. I that is that is abundantly clear. We know that it's backwards compatible, but to yet to not know if the PlayStation 5 will play PlayStation 3, 2, 1 and PSP consoles? No, 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 no. We I, I know I, I'm, I know they're going to exclude PSP consoles. Come on. That's that's a whole different data drive. You can't just do that. Unless they have a different port for that, and um, other than that, I have no idea. But anyway, um, the PlayStation Five is backwards compatible. We did establish this. It is gonna be, um, it is gonna be, and I'm actually very happy at that. And I will be getting one at least a, a couple of months after launch, and I'm gonna be happy about that. Uh, the last couple of months have been abysmal to my freaking, you know, rating. I am, you know, making progress on getting my money up for the PlayStation 5, but by that time, I should have it. Anyway, I do want to go up into next, uh, Ubisoft. Ubisoft, 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 Ubisoft. And this is from, uh, Gaming News, uh, C um, the CCN.com. Ubisoft finally realizes how bad most of their games are. And finally, they're actually starting to get it. Ubisoft earned plenty of praise for new creative directions with the Assassin's Creed series, a pivot a pivot it is now embarking upon for other major franchises. But Ubisoft games are pretty rubbish these days. You you might think that a blanket statement like that needs qualifying. Honestly, their games are all so similar that it barely feels like I'm taking I'm I'm talking about multiple games. Over the past decade they've managed to 
homogenize. I have no idea how to say that word, and I'm not going to attempt to use it. Before I start uh, making fun of people, I should not. Their entire catalog into the same murky pace. Part of the reason for that is the editorial team. A team of 100 people based out of Paris who basically controlled all the games Ubisoft put out. They controlled it all, from design to script writing. Now, according to VGC, they're finally going to change that up a bit. Ubisoft's editorial team is changing. It was announced in a statement to VGC on Friday that the editorial team would be expanded and restructured. The exact form these changes will take is unclear. From what we know, it seems like Ubisoft is trying to bring variety to that lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, that basically states right there that one team has been putting out everything that Ubisoft has been putting out. I'm not saying all of them have been bad, but let's see. Some of things like Ghost Recon Breakpoint could have done a lot more. Some of the things from the Assassin's Creed series is getting a little bit repetitive. And a lot of things that are coming out are so similar that really they don't, they you don't feel like you're talking about multiple games. It just feels like you're talking about one narrow pointed game. And that's kind of bad coming from a, you know, a marketing perspective. As someone who has studied games and stuff, you really don't want to be repetitive with your gaming. What you want to do is you want to stretch up your strategy or, you know, some sort of like, you know, your plot devices for some of your games. Like, Ubisoft, go out for horror or something. Go out for, you know, RPGs or something. You know, try it out. You need to branch out, and that's what their that's what their main problem is. They're hard to branch out to different mediums. Their main medium is action. That's it. And it's like you can only do so much with one, you know, with one plot. And that's kind of the problem. I can understand how you're going through the Assassin's Creed series. They're in different times, and that's. That's okay, I can understand that. And you're adding a lot to the Assassin's Creed franchise. Okay, I can understand that. But like Ghost Recon and you know, all your other games that you've been releasing lately, it's just, they all feel so similar. And when you don't have anything new to add to any of your games, you just, you kind of left with nothing. So let's be honest, from one game developer to another, I'm just going to say this real clear, switch up your strategies. It's not just your team, just switch up your plots. And believe me, go off for different genres and stuff. You know, people love Ubisoft games, but the problem is they're not, you know, there's no pizzazz. There's no, you know, there's nothing that we can sit there and say, this is new, this is fresh, this is what we can, we can latch on to. So, Ubisoft, get on that. <sighs> okay. Next up, I'm sorry, I went on a little rant there, but as a gamer, I, I know the hassle. Okay, next up, Cyberpunk 2077. One of the most highly anticipated games coming out of, you know, coming out of the gaming world. It was kind of upsetting that this hit. This has come from PCGamer.com, which they have really been reliable lately. Cyberpunk 2077 is now delayed. Cyberpunk 2077, which was slated to be out this April, isn't going to make it. CD Projekt Red dropped the news today that its big ugly face, um, big ugly future RPG, has been rescheduled to September 17th. The full delay announcement is below. And this is from CD Projekt Red. We have important news regarding Cyberpunk 2077's release date we'd like to share with you today. And it does say that. Oh my god. I am sorry for everyone who is waiting for a Keanu Reeves that squirreled. Sorry. Oh. Oh my god. And these are some tweets. Are Teleresian games making Witcher stuff? Our friends at CD Pro Project Red have delayed the release of Cyberpunk game at Cyberpunk game, and that's its official Twitter head. And we absolutely support them in this, taking the time to pause and test and do so in a way which puts less stress on the team is important. We love the folks at CDPR and 
we want them healthy and chill. Which I can mostly understand, and I'm I have it right up in front of me. Um, I'm I just transferred to Twitter, and this is exactly what it says under Cyberpunk 2077. Um, I'll pull it up for you guys at the end so you guys can see exactly what I mean. But it states, and I quote. We have important news regarding Cyberpunk 2077's release date. We'd like to share with you today. Cyberpunk 2077 won't make the April release window and we're moving the launch date to September 17th, 2020. We are currently at a stage where the game is complete and playable, but there's still work to be done. Night City is massive, full of storage, content, and places to visit. But due to the sheer scale and complexity of it all, we need more time to finish playtesting, fixing, and polishing. We want Cyberpunk 2077 to be our crowning achievement for this generation and postponing launch will give us the precious months we need to make the perfect game. Expect more regular updates on progress as we get closer to the new release day. We're really looking forward to seeing you in Night City. Thank you for your ongoing support. Marcian Lewinsky, Lewinsky, co-founder and Adam Bajwinski, head of studio, CD Project Red. And I will put here, I'll, I'll put it up in here. Let me do that. Boom, boom. Give me one moment. Boom, boom, boom. And I need to find out. Boom. There you go. So you guys can see exactly what I was reading. Uh, this is what was actually underneath their uh, Twitter header and what they said about the release date being pushed back a little bit. As it says, 20, September 17, 2020. Cyberpunk 2077 will be out, but I think it's this is a really good thing on their part. I'm sorry for everyone who is waiting for an April release of this, but I I think this was the correct move, specifically for the point that, you know, you want to make sure it's perfect before it gets sent out. And that's what some people have been destroying. Take a look at WWE 2K20. Take, let's take that for example. It was touted from being very big and immersive and it's, you know, it's strictly from the norm and they wanted the game to be good and then they rushed it out because, you know, Yux is not there no more. They rushed it out and look at the state it was in and it's still in. I haven't played it in a couple months, so I don't know how it's actually working, but I believe I, I messed up with the band, so I thank God that I wasn't on, online during New Year's. But either way, I think this is a really good idea, seeing as with that, if you want a game to succeed, you're going to want it to be absolutely perfect on launch day. You want it to be out in retrospective form that everyone's just going to enjoy. And I think this is a good call, good move, and I think... It's, it's going to be the right move. So, yeah. Anyway, before I end off today, ladies and gentlemen, I do have a couple other things I do want to address. Um, I'm not going to go at it very, very long, but these are just one-offs that I think, that I don't think it's too good to, you know, dive into, but it's still something that I think is, you know, worth mentioning. Okay, this is from interesting and interesting engineering dot com. Man takes over Air, Portland Airport monitor to play video game Apex Legends, and I'm a big fan of Apex Legends. So is Chaos. So is Tui, and so is Dave. We are all big fans of Apex Legends. So hearing this was awesome, and I'm just gonna read the top article right here. It says one man at Oregon's Portland Airport decided to crank his entertainment up a notch while he waited for his flight and hijacked one of the airport's monitors in order to play his video game. The game was a PlayStation 4 and it was plugged into a monitor that, that showed a map of the airport assisting travelers with directions. That is actually boss. I couldn't believe it. You've got all these monitors there and he's playing a video game, told CNN staff and Stephen Diaz. Another passenger who tweeted about the incident, she reported the passenger seemed to be talking on a headset to other players. <laughs> that is, okay, this, this man is my hero. This man is my hero. And actually here, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to do this because I want you guys to see what I'm seeing so you guys can just understand the severity here I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna boom boom I'm gonna replace I'm hoping it replaces better yep there we go boom 
Look at this man. This man is my hero. And you can tell in the middle right there that is, it is it is an airport. It is <laughs> all of this. And he is playing Apex. I can tell. <laughs> oh my god. My my hero. My freaking hero. <laughs> Atta boy, my man. Atta boy. Game like your life depends on it. Because it freaking does. <laughs> Uh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, other than that, at the moment, a GameCube title called Mr. Driller Drilling gets a new trademark in Europe. A new trademark has been swatted on the European Global Brand Database for Mr. Driller Drilling, an entry in the subter subterranean puzzle series that launched in Japan in 2002 but never found its way west. This is a Japan exclusive game that is now getting its own new trademark the action th this action by bandy namco is even more curious when you consider the publisher's recent Jap japanese trademark of something called mr driller encore it's it's not poss impossible to surmise that both trademarks could be referencing the same product that is a remastered edition of the classic gamecube release this is purely speculation of course but it's still pretty snug which actually is pretty cool. I, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was worth mentioning that a never before seen in the United States unless you went to Japan. And a Japan only game, a Japan exclusive game, Mr. Driller, gets its own European trademark from Bandai Namco and could be finding its way over here. Finally, that would be actually really cool and I would love to play it. I would actually... Heck, maybe I would actually be able to uh, look up uh, Mr. Driller and I may play it on the channel at some point. Um, probably as one-off, who knows. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think you get done hearing me ramble, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everyone enjoyed. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you guys like what you see here, go check out my channel in the description below. It's under my name. It's with my name. Go check out my channel, which I do a ton of gaming i do i've been doing paper mario the thousand year door super mario brothers 3 dragon ball z budokai tenkaichi 3 midnight club the dub edition and i've been also playing pokemon emerald on my channel i've been playing a lot of games over there come over and check it out because i do a lot of stuff over there well that's my main source of channel i do do a lot of stuff over here but that's my that's my main priority so come over and check um, check me out anyway if not then go look down on the rest of us and see what you guys want to see you can go to chaos 6's channel and have a little bit of fun with though over there with pokemon you can go to Tui's channel which he barely even uses this man is he's he's lagging we also got um dave who does who does a ton of stuff i he doesn't really join us and many other things but he does join us in gaming and um and gaming and some other stuff on the channel so that that is my boy that <laughs> But he also does check in with the channel at some points on my channel. So, do what he does. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. And hope that you like and subscribe to the channel. Because we do a lot of work over here. So, have a little bit of fun. Click that subscribe button. And enjoy. Anyway, hope everyone enjoyed today. But, good gaming. Happy hunting. And I'll see all you Dragonlings back inside the world of the gaming news. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Dragon action. Peace. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a little bit of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door to start streaming. Um, it's 2 a.m. actually when I'm recording this. And I'm loud as fuck. So, yeah. <laughs> I always get one per video, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ending it anyway. So, see you guys next time. I'll see you guys uh, this Wednesday for Spider-Man. So, come and have fun. <laughs> anyway, peace.